Here he is back again, Wayne Carey, for our weekly uh, BPL vidcast, and it's a huge week, um, grand final week, Wayne. You, before we touch on that, let's talk about the two preliminary finals. You went on Friday night to see the de demolition of the Cats. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. Not what we predicted. Not what we predicted. What did you? What happened? Oh look, I just think uh, Collingwood were just brilliant. I mean, the, the pressure that they put on the Cats um, from from the outset really uh, put Geelong on the back foot. And um, all credit goes to Collingwood. They were just uh, they were super. And I think uh, a few of their players after the game said it was probably the best first half that they played um, as a group. So yeah, they were they were right on the money. They also, in the process of um, racking up that 10-goal lead at half-time, they made a few of the old Geelong Warriors look very old and slow. And I know that can happen in a final yeah. when you get beaten by so much, but Ling and Milburn noticeably off the pace. But they even made players like um, Ottens and Joel Corey and Josh Hunt and Corey Enright, players like that, look pretty... Um, Fumbly and slow. Oh, they did, and, and look, that's uh, that's just applied pressure all over the ground. So they, uh, yeah, they were making mistakes that they normally wouldn't make. Um, Gary Ablett was absolutely super. Um, you know, obviously the talk about uh, whether it's his last game. Um, you know, I think I said about 12 weeks ago that it probably would be. Um, so, but he was absolutely brilliant. But you're right, they uh, they made them look second rate purely because of the pressure they put on them. Yeah. Okay. If Gary Ablett does go, did Geelong need to start? Rebuilding now, going through some minor rebuild, or are they still got the list? Do you reckon to contend again in the next year or two? Oh yeah, I, I still think that they've got the list to contend. No yeah. doubt about that. Naturally, what happens after you, you know you have a turnover of players, there might be some players obviously not there. Um, there'll be uh, you know, and there'll be other players come in, and you have to do that each year to to, to keep the place um, fresh and vibrant. And I think that's what will happen. And uh, I still think the cats are. Um, a very, very good side, and I think they'll be around the mark again next year. Which of those older players, quickly, do you imagine won't won't be part of Bomber Thompson's plans in the next twelve months? Oh, look, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sort of, I haven't thought about it too much. But you know, even a guy, <coughs> excuse me, like a Cameron Ling, mm. who uh, you know has had his uh, had his troubles this year. Um, he's been a he's been a fantastic player for the Cats. He's their captain. Whether he uh, you know plays on. Next year, I think obviously he will, but um, whether he relinquishes the captain to a to a younger yeah, player yeah. and takes that burden off him, so he can concentrate purely on yeah. on uh, playing good footy. Yeah. Okay. And the game quickly on Saturday night, the Bulldogs um, got away to a good start, but when the whip whips were cracking, they just got swamped, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And look, it was always it was always going to catch up with them. Um, they uh, I, I I thought they were very good considering uh, the players that they had out. I mean, they, they've. Uh, They've been uh, decimated by injury, and uh, I think that was the difference between them not going on. That's four preliminary finals now that they've played in a row. You keep going to the well, eventually you're going to get through. I still think they've got a, a window of opportunity yeah. if they've got their full team on the uh, on the park. Um, I think once again they'll be contenders again next year. Okay. Um, the 2010 Grand Final, the big one. Now. Am I right in saying St Kilda can probably do what Geelong were unable to do, and that is regain some control of Colling Collingwood's running game? Yeah, well, that, look, that's exactly the, what they'll try to do. They'll uh, they'll shut this down. It's not going to be a free-flowing game like it was on Friday night. I mean, this this will be a, a fairly low-scoring game. I mean, we saw the uh, the Bulldog Saint game. It was a low-scoring game. Um, I think this one will be very similar, and that's what St Kilda will want to turn it into a dogfight. They yeah. certainly won't want uh, Collingwood to to uh, play like they did up the other night. And that's uh, you know they look very slick, but that's that's due to their pressure that they put on as well. So they're going to obviously be putting their uh, their pressure on the Saints. But I I hate to say it, but uh, Collingwood just look unstoppable to me at the moment, especially the way they played the other night. Well, where where do you think the game will be won and lost? Is it is it the power in the midfield? Oh look, I think I think it'll be won and lost. Um, yeah, exactly that through the midfield. I mean. Um, St Kilda are super in that area, um, and and we know what you know. We know what um, Dane Swan and and Co have been doing for the Pies. So, it, it, I think it's going to be won and lost purely through who puts on the most pressure, who tackles the best. And and uh, I know it's old cliches and fairly simple, but the side that um, that works the hardest will uh, will come out on top. And I just think Collingwood have probably got a few more options. Let's talk about a few possible personnel changes. Um, does Mick Malthouse bring Prestige Giacomo back to play on Rewild or not? 
Oh, I'm not so sure about that. I, I wouldn't be making too many changes. I mean, you know, you've also got Leon Davis um, yeah. maybe to come back in. Hasn't had a great record in finals. Do you bring him back in? I mean, they've got... Look, they've got good worries, haven't they? Mm. Um, you know, they've got fit players ready to come back in. They, uh, uh, I don't think they'll be making too many changes. Maybe one. Maybe one. And you I'm know, not sure, and you I'm know not sure, one? And I'm no. not sure which one it is, but I think they, they, they'll probably make one change on it. Okay. And Stevie Baker yeah. has got to be some chance to coming coming back into the St Kilda team. Do you yeah. Think? Yeah. Well, from all reports, um, you know, he was he was very close on the uh, on the weekend. Um, you know, grand final. He's the sort of player you want to be playing in a grand final. Seriously. So I, I think Baker will come in, no doubt. Where, uh, where would you play him, or how, who would you play him on? Oh, look, uh, he, he can play anywhere. He will probably play down back if he, uh, if he plays. Um, whether he has the fitness and the match conditioning mm. to go on to someone on ball, you, you probably doubt that. Maybe yeah. in short spurts, but you'd expect him to be down back. And he, he's, his hardness um, is invaluable in a grand final. Yep. Conversely, um, the Magpies have got a bit of inexperience. They've got six players who haven't played 50 games, and a seventh, I think, Wellingham did play his 50th game on the weekend. Is that a factor, or is it just something that's uh, kind of a figment of the media's imagination? Well, it certainly wasn't a factor in front of 95,000 on Friday night, so I wouldn't see it changing too much. But the, probably the biggest, well, the biggest difference, obviously the crowd's going to be very similar to that on Friday night. It's going to be a day game, mm -hmm. not a night game. The mm -hmm. Pies have played a lot of night games lately. Um, but it's just a build-up of the week. It's, it's how you handle this week. I mean, there's parades, there's, you know, the talk, you're picking up the paper, it's the, the crowds at training. So, you know, that's, it's, it also comes down to who handles that side of things better. And uh, St Kilda have been there. St Kilda have been there. So I wouldn't expect, I think Mick Malthouse and, and Buckley and co um, have got a pretty good grasp. I think their leadership at Collingwood right now is as strong as ever. And um, I think they're, they're, uh, they're very, very confident, there's no doubt about that. But um, You saw them on the weekend, didn't you? I saw a couple of the guys um, at a charity day yesterday, and uh, yeah, look, they, they, you know, they're confident, as they should be, because uh, you know, they, they were super. Now, there are echoes of the 1998 grand final a bit, if we can hark back into ancient history, where the Kangaroos played a lot of night games leading up to the grand final suddenly confronted by a very hot day uh, on the grand final day. Um, it's going to be 22 degrees forecast for Saturday. Um, Collingwood have played a lot of night games coming in. Is that something that might be an issue? Oh, look, at, uh, there's no doubt that it has that it have some effect. I mean, not, not that we were using that as an excuse back then, but, yeah, look, it, uh, I mean, well, it, it certainly uh, it certainly may have to use interchange more. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they'll they'll evaluate that as uh, as the day comes. If they're saying it's 22 now. It'll probably be 13. <laughs> it's got to help if it is a dry day. A, a strong marking forward like Nick Rewatt doesn't. It? Oh look, I, I, I think Nick plays well in sort of just about any conditions, but um, except on Harry Taylor in the um, final. Yeah, so you'd. you'd uh, um, you know, if you're a big four, you'd certainly want it to be a, a nice sunny day, not too much wind. <laughs> exactly. Which happened in '98 as well. That's right. Yeah. Um, all right, Wayne Carey, dual premiership captain. Give us a uh, drum roll after a drum roll. Give us a final tip and uh, a margin. Um, look, I actually tips and Kilda, if you remember, right back when we uh, started. Um, mm. At the start of the year, I said St Kilda would win this year's grand final. Yep. Um, and I'm going to jump off. <laughs> I, uh, oh. I, uh, I, I think the Pies have just just been you know the outstanding team of the year. They proved it uh, they proved it against the might of Geelong on Friday night. So I just can't go past the Pies. I think they'll be uh, they'll be too good for the Saints. Swanee threatened to put you in a headlock. What's going on? No, with? no, no. Not at all. But no look they, you just can't go past um, Collingwood and, and what they've done all year and and the, the the performance on Friday night won me over, no doubt. I mean, they, they were just brilliant. And if they can uh, if they can repeat that, then yeah, I think they'll be far too good for the Saints. Have you got your ticket booked out of Melbourne on uh, Saturday evening, like half of the rest of Melbourne, or not? Or are you going to happy um, to brave no, the hordes? No, no, no. I'll uh, I'll just stay at home and stay out of. Uh, Stay out of harm's way. Lock up, Ella. Yeah. Um, Wayne Carey, thanks very much for your thoughts again. We look forward to your summing up of the big game uh, next week. Thanks, Charlie.